multicollinearity and uh, today we will learn uh, what is uh, multicollinearity and uh, the effects of multicollinearity or the problems uh, you know due to multicollinearity so what is multicollinearity what is multi collinearity okay the problem of of multi collinearity exists when two or more regressors variable are strongly correlated or linearly dependent okay suppose uh, uh, we wish to fit fit the model uh, y equal to x beta plus epsilon so we are assuming that you know, uh, we are considering that there are uh, this is the matrix form of multiple linear regression and uh, there are k minus 1 regressors and 1 response variable. Okay. So, the we know that the least square estimates of beta is beta hat equal to x prime x inverse x prime y okay so now you know if x prime x is uh, singular then we can't perform the the inverse x prime x inverse okay uh, and uh, singular means you know the determinant is uh, equal to 0 x prime x determinant determinant is equal to 0 and uh, this happens when at least one column of x is linearly dependent on the other columns okay so that means uh, you know the columns of uh, the ith column of this matrix x uh, stands for the ith uh, regressor variable uh, so the meaning of this one is that you know uh, if one regressor can be uh, i mean one regressor is li uh, is linearly dependent on the other regressors then uh, x prime x is uh, singular and uh, we can't compute the inverse of the x prime x matrix okay let me give uh, one example for this one uh, 
uh, an example. Can we use the data below? to get a unique fit to the model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3 plus epsilon. Okay, and the data here is the data x1, x2, x3 and the response variable y. So, 1 minus 2, 4, 81, 2 minus 7, 11, 88, 4, 3, 5, 94, 7, 1, 13, 95, 8, minus 1, 17, 123. So, here in this example, we have uh, three uh, regressor variables x1, uh, x2, x3 and one response variable and here is the data. Now, the question is you know whether we can use the data, use this data to get a unique fit to this model. Well, of course, we can, we can get a unique fit uh, that means, we can estimate the re regression coefficients using the using least square estimate that is beta hat equal to x prime x inverse x prime y provided you know provided x prime x is uh, not singular. Now, here if you observe you know it is not difficult to check that uh, these three uh, regressors uh, are not uh, independent. Here, uh, you check that you know x 2 plus x 3, uh, take this first observation. So, uh, x 2 value is minus 2, x 3 value is 4 and x 1 value is equal to 1. Uh, you can check that uh, x 2 plus x 3 that is equal to 2. Uh, so, x 2 plus x 3 is twice of x 1. Uh, take the second observation x 2 plus x 3 is equal to 4, which is 2 times of x 1. Uh, third observation also uh, you know x 2 plus x 3 equal to 8, which is uh, uh, 2 x 1. Okay? So, here the relation between between the regressors is like uh, x 2 plus x 3 uh, is equal to twice x 1 or you know same as writing that x 1 can be expressed in terms of you know using uh, x 1 depends on uh, x 2 and x 3. So, x 1 is uh, x 2 by 2 plus x 3 by 2. Okay. So, here uh, really we cannot uh, we cannot uh, estimate uh, the regression coefficients because you know x prime x is uh, is is singular here. So, here uh, because of this fact uh, you know they are not independent on. So, uh, so that is why x prime x 
is singular uh, so x prime x determinant is here it is exactly equal to 0 uh, determinant is equal to 0 okay so this is an example here uh, which uh, uh, illustrate uh, the definition of uh, multi collinearity here uh, the i mean in this problem i mean in this particular data the problem of multi collinearity exists because uh, because the columns of x so the x is nothing but the, you know the x matrix is nothing but this one so so here you know uh, the one column for example the first column can be uh, i mean is it's linearly depend uh, can be uh, written as the linear combination of x2 and uh, x3 so that's why x prime x is singular and uh, and the problem of multi collinearity collinearity uh, exists here okay so next uh, we'll be talking about uh, you know the effect of uh, multi collinearity multi collinearity well the first uh, or you know i can also say that the problems due to problems due to multi collinearity So, the first one is it says the strong multi collinearity between regressors results in large variance and uh, covariance of regression coefficients okay so now i'm going to uh, illustrate uh, what i mean by this you know uh, this says that you know if there exist a strong multi collinearity in the data then that results in large variance and covariance of regression coefficients okay so let me uh, consider uh, multiple linear regression model uh, with two regressors right so uh, my model here is yi equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i 1 plus beta 2 x i 2 plus epsilon i so this uh, i stands for the ith, obs ith observation so i is from 1 to n now the x matrix for this fit consists of the columns consists of the columns so here is the x, x matrix x matrix for this model is uh, we know that this is 1 x 1 1 x 1 2 right 1 
x two one, x two two, like that one, x n one, x n two. Okay. Now uh, we'll talk about uh, the centering and scaling of this <coughs> regression data. <coughs> centering and uh, scaling of regression. So, what we do is that uh, you know if we replace, if we write x i 1 is equal to x i 1 minus x 1 bar by s 1 1 square root of that. So, uh, let me tell what is this notation x 1 bar of course, it is um, the mean associated with the first regressor. So, this is equal to 1 by n summation x i 1 i equal to 1 to n and uh, s 1 1 is equal to uh, summation x i 1 minus x 1 bar square sum over i equal to 1 to n. Okay, so, uh, well uh, let me write also say x small x i 2 equal to capital X i 2 minus x 2 bar by s 2 2 square root and y i small y i is equal to capital y i minus y bar by root s y y. Okay. So, this is the mean uh, associated with the second regressor. So, x 2 bar is equal to 1 by n summation x i 2 i is from 1 to n and s 2 2 is equal to x i 2 minus x 2 bar whole square 1 to n and here also you know y bar is equal to summation y i 1 to n right and s y y is equal to summation y i minus y bar whole square. Okay, so, what I did here is that you know uh, my original data is uh, x 1, x 2 and uh, y and then what I am doing is that I am replacing this x 1 by small x 1. Um, so, small x 1, small x 2, just notation only and then small y. Now, uh, 
one thing we need to observe is that uh, the mean of the original observation is, uh, I mean the mean associated with the first regressor for the given data is of course, it is always x1 bar, well, but here if you take uh, the mean of the transformed data, now this the mean of small x i is 1 is always equal to 0. So, here uh, x 1 bar is equal to 0, similarly x 2 bar is also equal to 0 and y bar is also equal to 0. And the other thing to observe here is that uh, you know summation x i 1 square 1 to n this is equal to 1 this is equal to 1 and this is also true for the second uh, regressor like summation x i 2 square 1 to n is equal to 1 and summation y i square 1 to n is equal to 1. Okay. Now, you know the model uh, uh, for the original data is uh, we wanted to fit this model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus epsilon. Well, this transformation is called you know centering and scaling of regression data. Uh, and uh, here for this model we know that uh, you know the least square estimates uh, gives beta naught hat is equal to y bar minus beta 1 hat x 1 bar minus beta 2 hat x 2 bar right but you know if uh, you feed the same model here for the transform data also if you feed the model like y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus epsilon for the transform data I am fitting the same model then uh, it is not difficult to check that that uh, that beta naught hat is going to be 0 here because uh, see beta naught hat beta naught hat is equal to y bar minus beta 1 hat x 1 bar minus beta 2 hat x 2 bar, but all this uh, y bar is equal to 0, x bar is equal to 0, x bar x 1 bar is equal to 0 and x 2 bar is also equal to 0. So, here this intercept for this transform data is always going to be equal to 0. So, that is why uh, you know for this uh, um, in for this scaled and uh, uh, centered data, we will omit uh, the intercept beta naught from the model. So, the model assuming that uh, x 1, x 2, and y are centered and scaled is just uh, you know y i equal to beta 1 x i 1 plus beta 2 x i 2 plus epsilon.
phi. So, we uh, omitted the intercept beta naught from the from the model because for the same for the for the uh, centered or or the scaled data we just uh, checked you know that uh, intercept beta naught is always uh, going to be equal to 0. Well, uh, so now next we will write down the um, x matrix uh, for this model. Uh, so, the x matrix is equal to basically it is uh, x 1 1, x 1 2, I am writing small that means this is the transformed uh, for the transformed data, uh, x 2 1, x 2 2 and uh, x n 1, x n 2. See that uh, column 1 1 1 1 is not there, uh, that column uh, is associated with the intercept beta naught. Okay. So, this one is basically uh, x 1 1 is nothing but uh, x 1 1 minus x 1 bar by root of s 1 1. x 1 2 is uh, x 1 2 capital x 1 2 minus x 2 bar by root of s 2 2 and similarly x 2 1 minus x 1 bar by root of s 1 1 x 2 2 minus x 2 bar s 2 2 and uh, we have x n 1 minus x 1 bar by root of s 1 1, x n 2 minus x 2 bar by root of r of s 2 2. Okay, so, this is the x matrix uh, for the transformed uh, data you can say. Now, uh, what is the normal equation associated with this model? Uh, the normal equation in general you know basically I am trying to uh, find the least square least square estimate of uh, two regression coefficients beta beta 1 and beta 2. Uh, so the normal equation is x prime x, beta hat equal to x prime y. Okay, you know what is y, y is uh, in matrix form y equal to y 1 1 minus sorry y 1 y equal to uh, capital y 1 minus y bar by root of s y y y 2 minus y bar by root over of s y y similarly y n minus y bar by root over of s y so, this is what the y matrix is. Okay, so, uh, here is the normal equation. Now, uh, what is x prime x? Uh, this one is, this implies, see x prime x is, uh, you can check that the x prime x is 1 and then r 1 2, uh, this r 1 2 is nothing but uh, the sample correlation between 
x1 and x2 okay and one here because of the fact you know uh, because of the fact that uh, because of the fact that uh, this sum x i 1 square is equal to 1 and sum x i 2 square is equal to 1. That is why uh, these two elements are equal to 1 and beta hat here this uh, matrix beta hat uh, has two elements beta 1 hat beta 2 hat which is equal to R one Y R two Y. Uh, well, this R one Y is the <coughs> sample correlation between between x one and the response variable Y, and R two Y is the sample correlation uh, between the second regressor and the response variable Y right so the normal equation we have is uh, r is 1 r 1 2 r 2 1 r 1 2 and r 2 1 are same 1 beta 1 hat beta 2 hat is equal to r 1 y r 2 y right. Well, where I already mentioned that R 1 y or R 1 2 is sample correlation between x 1 and uh, x 2 and r 1 y is the sample correlation between x 1 and y. Similarly, r 2 y is the sample correlation between x 2 and y. So, what is this formula of r 1 y? r 1 y is equal to some x 1 i x i 1 minus x 1 bar into y i minus y bar 1 to n root over of S 1 1 S y y and R 1 2 is equal to some x i 1 minus x 1 bar y i minus y bar. Sorry, this is equal to x i 2 minus x 2 bar, right, s 1 1 s 2 2. So, maybe uh, more precisely I should replace them by capital X capital Y ok. So, you can check with the, uh, the original X matrix now this is the X matrix for the transform data and then you can check why you know x prime x is equal to this you know what is r 1 2 uh, and what is r 1 y r 2 y all these things. So, you can check that how uh, why this element is r 
1 2 that is uh, the sample correlation between uh, the regressor x1 and uh, x2 okay now to get uh, beta 1 hat and uh, beta 2 hat we need to compute the inverse of this uh, matrix uh, this matrix is called the correlation matrix now okay this uh, x prime x matrix this one is now uh, it's called uh, the correlation matrix okay well so what we have is that we have x prime x is equal to 1 r 1 2 r 2 1 1 here and you can check that the inverse of of x prime x is x prime x inverse which is equal to 1 by 1 minus r 1 to square minus r 1 to by 1 minus r 1 to square minus r 2 1 1 minus r 1 to square 1 by 1 minus r 1 to square it's not difficult to check that this is the inverse of x prime x right uh, well so uh, beta hat the least least square estimator of the regression coefficient beta hat is equal to x prime x inverse x prime y okay so which is equal to uh, 1 by 1 minus r 1 to square minus r 1 to 1 minus r 1 to square minus r 2 1 1 minus r 1 to square 1 by 1 minus r 1 to square x prime x inverse x prime y is equal to uh, r 1 y r 2 y ok. So, from here you know the the estimates are beta 1 hat equal to r 1 y minus r 1 2 r 2 y by 1 minus r 1 2 square and beta 2 hat. So, this is you know basically the least square estimate for the transformed data uh, in terms of the correlation coefficient sample correlation coefficient and beta 2 hat is r 2 y minus r 2 1 r y r 1 y by 1 minus r 1 2 square right. So, uh, what I said the problem with if there is multi, uh, if, if there is a problem of uh, multi collinearity in the data uh, then that uh, results in large uh, variance and covariance of regression coefficients. So, uh, we at uh, right now we have uh, the least square estimator of the regression coefficient beta 1 and beta 2. Next we will check what is the variance of beta 1 and we are going to prove that you know the variance of beta 1 and also uh, the variance of beta 2 uh, uh, that tends to g tends to infinity uh, as uh, r 1 2 tends to 1 that means, uh, when there is a strong multi collinearity between the regressor x 1 and x 2 then the variance of beta 1 hat and the variance of beta 2 hat are going to be infinity. So, uh, that is what uh, we are going to prove now.
Um, so, next we need to find the variance of beta 1 hat and variance of beta 2 hat in terms of uh, the sample correlation coefficient r. Okay. So, the variance of we know that the variance of uh, beta j hat in general is equal to sigma square x prime x inverse the j j th element of this x prime x inverse. Right. So, here from this formula you know variance of beta 1 hat is equal to sigma square sigma square into x prime x inverse 1 1 th element. Okay. So, what is x prime x inverse 1 1 th element? The 1 1 th element is 1 by 1 minus r 1 to square. Okay. So, this one is equal to sigma square by 1 minus r 1 to square. Now, you know if, so this is the variance of uh, beta 1 hat and similarly the variance of uh, beta 2 hat is equal to sigma square x prime x inverse 2 to 8th element, uh, which is also equal to, you know, 2 to 8th element is uh, also 1 by 1 minus r 1 to square. Uh, so, here the variance of beta 2 hat is also sigma square by 1 minus r 1 to square. Well, now you know if, if there is strong multicollinearity. between the regressor x 1 and x 2, then the correlation coefficient r 1 to will be large. So, large means you know the uh, modulus value can be uh, equal to 1. So, when uh, r 1 to the modulus uh, of uh, r 1 to tends to 1, the variance of beta 1 had tends to 0. So, this tends to sorry uh, tends to infinity. So, this tends to infinity as r 1 to tends to 1. So, this will tends to 1 when the regressor x 1 and x 2 are strongly uh, correlated or uh, you can say when there is strong multicollinearity between x 1 and x 2 then r 1 to tends to 1. Similarly, this quantity is also the variance of beta 2 also tends to uh, infinity as uh, r 1 to tends to 1. Okay. So, also I said that you know, strong multicollinearity results in uh, large variance and covariance. So, what is the covariance of covariance of beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat, this is equal to sigma square x prime x inverse 1 to 8th element. Okay. Uh, so, what is 1 to 8th element or 2 1 8th element that is uh, minus r 1 to by 1 minus r 1 to square. Okay. So, this one is going to be sigma square r 1 to minus 1 minus r 1 to square and this also you know tends to plus minus infinity uh, depending on uh, whether uh, whether 
depending on whether R 1 2 tends to plus 1 or R 1 2 tends to minus 1. So, uh, this is you know the proof of uh, I mean uh, we uh, using uh, two regressors in the model in the multiple linear regression model we illustrated you know how uh, the strong multicollinearity results uh, in uh, large variance and covariance in uh, of the regressor coefficients. Okay, so, the same uh, so this uh, this illustration is using the two regressors in the multiple linear regression model, but uh, this is also true uh, if you have you know more than uh, two regressors in the model. So, uh, that we are going to uh, mention now, suppose you have you know more than more than two regressors uh, in the multiple linear regression model, then uh, uh, it can be proved that it can be shown that the diagonal elements of x prime x inverse matrix r 1 by 1 minus r j square for all j from 1 to k minus 1. So, I am talking about a multiple linear regression model with uh, k minus 1 regressors and uh, oh, of course, you know I need to define what is this uh, rj square. So, here you know before we had r 1 2 square. Okay. Now, uh, r 1 2 has been replaced by uh, r j, where r j is the coefficient of multiple determination from the regression of the regression of x j on the remaining k minus 2 regressors. Okay, uh, I think I need to explain this. Uh, here, uh, you know, uh, okay, R j square. R j square is the coefficient of multiple determination. Uh, we know what is uh, coefficient of uh, multiple de determination in multiple uh, linear regression model. Uh, that is, uh, R square is equal to S s regression by S s total. And uh, this parameter measures, you know, the proportion of variability in the response variable that is explained by the by the regressor variable. But here, uh, what I mean by R j square is that uh, so that is you now we know what is R square, the coefficient of multiple determination uh, when we fit a, a regression model between y and the uh, be between the re response variable and the uh, and the k minus one regressor variables, but here 
this R j square is the coefficient of multiple determination from the regression of x j on the remaining k minus 1 regressors. That means, here the multiple linear regression model is in between between x j and the remaining k minus 1 regressors. So, here x j you expressed in terms of the remaining regressors say x 1, x 2, x j minus 1, x j plus 1, x k minus 1. Right. So, here the uh, model is in between uh, trying to express x j in terms of the remaining regressors. So, if you can recall my first example today, uh, you know there I told you know we, we, we have checked that the x 1 if I am if I am recalling correctly x 1 is equal to uh, x 2 by 2 plus x 3 by 2 and this one is true for all the observations uh, we, we had. Uh, so, so, this is what we want you know uh, and, uh, and the coefficient of multiple determination for this example this one is basically r 1 square and here you know r 1 square is 100 percent because uh, because uh, x 2 and x 3 can explain uh, 100 percent of the variability in in x 1. So, uh, what we do uh, so this r j now you know I hope you understood that what is r j square r j square is the coefficient of multiple determination for this regression model. So, uh, you feed the model you know uh, you express x j in terms of the remaining regressors and then uh, you compute SS regression for this model, you compute SS total uh, and uh, you will get R j square. Well, okay. So, since this is the uh, diagonal element, now uh, I can say that uh, in when you have you know more than two regressors in the multiple linear regression model, the variance of beta j hat is equal to a sigma square x prime x inverse the j j th element and uh, the j j th element is equal to sigma square by 1 minus r j square. Okay. So, this tends to infinity as r j square tends to 1. r j square tends to 1, I mean uh, sometime we write, uh, most of the time we write it this in terms of percentage. So, r j square is 100 percent means that r j square tends to 1. Okay. So, r j square tends to 1 means uh, you know uh, this will happen if there is strong multicollinearity between x j and any subset of of other k minus 2 regressors then r j square will be close to unity. Okay. Uh, 
So, if there is a strong multicollinearity between the regressor x j and uh, any subset of the other remaining k minus 2 regressors, then uh, r j square uh, will be close to unity and, uh, and the variance of beta j hat uh, will be tends, I mean will tend to infinity. So, this uh, proves you know just uh, today uh, we could manage to talk about uh, only uh, one effect of multicollinearity that means only one problem due to multicollinearity that that says that you know strong multicollinearity uh, results in large variance and covariance uh, of the regression coefficients. Uh, and uh, we illustrated uh, this point uh, both um, for the multiple linear regression model uh, using two regressor variable in the model and then uh, in general. Uh, well, next class we will be talking about uh, um, some other you know there are several uh, effects of multicollinearity in multiple linear regression model. So, we will be talking about those uh, problems in the next class. Thank you very much. Thank you.